Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, huge show lined up yet again. We've got plenty of crypto news to get through. We see companies buying Ethereum now as well as more Bitcoin. We're setting up in a nice reaccumulation zone before a potential breakout, like I've shown on the YouTube community posts with a specific time frame in mind. So stick around for that. Uniswap is also at new all-time highs, even though we are below the all-time highs for Bitcoin and Ethereum. The last thing I want to go through is NFTs and some projects to look for in the NFT space. We don't have to pick the exact NFT, but projects which are exposed to NFTs. So with that in mind, hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon. If you haven't already, plenty of you are still unsubscribed. Hit that down below so you are up to date with the time, time sensitive news and the like button if you find some value from the video. All right, let's dive into it. Getting the trusty Google Trends out again. I've got NFT, Ethereum, Uniswap, Stimulus. So Stimulus is of course huge. We're gonna talk about that because a lot of people believe it's going to have a big impact on the markets. Of course, we've seen it before, but I think this also has a lot to do with the US dollar dropping, which is why Bitcoin tends to increase. Even if the, Bitcoin, uh, the US dollar goes up, Bitcoin is looking very strong to not be affected so much by that US dollar increase. So we'll check all that out in a moment. Taking a look at Google Trends without stimulus in there, and we can see Ethereum is on the decline in the search volumes, but uh, NFT is very much on the incline. Now that could be another abbreviation for something else, but right now we know it's very, very hot in the crypto space and I'm comparing it to Ethereum. Uniswap, however, isn't as hot, but it has broken to new all-time highs. So potentially we could see a rise on Uniswap very soon. Not sure yet. We're going to wait and see. But Ethereum, still hot. Uni uh, NFTs on the rise. Fear and Greed Index, 81. Last week, 38. Super, super low last week, but we have sprung well and truly out of that. And we're probably going to be on our way to those 90s in no time. So 1st of March, looking very good for that buy-in the, the dip at 38 right now. It's still a, a nice accumulation level. So I, I, I like those levels at the moment. First piece of news, crypto coin outperforming Bitcoin is about to see supply reduced. We talked about this recently, but I'll bring it up briefly again. Uh, the coin they're talking about is Ethereum. Now, it's no surprise to anyone. It's the EIP-1559. So the Ethereum, Ethereum Improvement Proposal, which discusses uh, burning gas, which will potentially reduce the supply, might outstrip the uh, inflation of Ethereum. That's all this is really saying. It's just repeating that at the moment. What I do want to bring to the attention is Bloomberg is talking about it, which generally doesn't talk too much about crypto. They do have a crypto section in the Bloomberg news, but in terms of uh, overall news, they generally stick to Bitcoin. So the fact that they're bringing up Ethereum, getting out into the mainstream a lot more, we know that, but it's just nice to see it in the news as well. Next bit of news, Bitcoin retakes 50 grand, Uniswap cracks the top 10, and we have the $1.9 trillion fiscal stimulus plan aimed at accelerating economic recovery. We know all that. So it hasn't gone through yet, but it's on the verge of passing. So I think we're going to see this in the headlines until it passes and then a lot more once it passes and then we'll start to see some spikes. But potentially the markets have priced this in, especially with how bullish everything sounds and how much they need that money into the economy after the NASDAQ has dropped about 20 or 30%. There was a big fall on the NASDAQ last week. So I think that might allow the passing of another uh, stimulus plan to be that little bit easier, to bring that money in because stock markets are falling. Let's pump them up again. These are the companies here. So I've got one company here, software firm Meitu buys 22 million of Ethereum, 18 million of Bitcoin for its treasury. Now this is a Hong Kong listed company, makes image and video processing software. Does that really matter? I don't think so, but the fact they're buying about $40 million worth of cryptocurrency is a pretty big deal. 15,000 Ethereum sh uh, supply shortage is coming through and about uh, 380 Bitcoin in the open market on March 5th. So we know a date that they purchased and the pricing uh, approximately on that date. So we can look at that again in a little bit later. The fact I want to bring up here, the point that I want to bring up here is, are we going to start see 
seeing companies buying cryptocurrency to be to become relevant again. So May 2, nothing going on in their price. 2020 through to 2021, their share price zilch, $1.50 basically the entire year. Now we see them buy cryptocurrency. This is on uh, March 5th. However, from uh, January 29th through to February 19th, their price basically doubled and a little bit. So maybe somewhere in the management department, they knew about a potential cryptocurrency purchase. And this is part of the reason. Now I'm just speculating entirely here, but it, I find it kind of strange that a company that's done nothing through 2019, the price continues to fall, especially after the entire market was going up. This is of course listed on the Hong Kong exchange, but world markets were going up into that 2019, 2020 before we got the COVID crash. Things went crazy in March, we got that big dump. And now all of a sudden in the last couple of months, uh, well, last six or so weeks, we see the company basically double and a little bit. I think this could be a trend that we see moving forward into the 2021 Bitcoin and cryptocurrency bull market. Companies basically irrelevant otherwise are buying cryptocurrencies to position themselves and have some sort of investment in their cash reserves. And it basically makes them relevant again. It makes them seen in their stock markets and people will take interest in their company to move these stock prices. So I'm very much on the lookout for that happening. And, and it's not just big companies buying cryptocurrency. Celsius, network valued at 3.1 billion following independent review. Our, and this is from Alpha Sigma Capital. Uh, Celsius, I bring this up because Celsius market cap is $1.1 billion. So you could get a 200% increase thereabouts, not exactly, but uh, looking at their valuation of 3 billion. Why would we look at Alpha Sigma and say, yep, you guys have got it exactly right. Anyone's guess right now. But looking at their future growth, it's looking pretty decent where they got here that it could have about $30 billion of asset under management right here. By the end of 2025, Celsius's assets under management is expected to reach nearly $30 billion. One potential growth driver for Celsius in the long term is adding exchange capability. So this looks like it's going down that direction of crypto.com and CRO, another favorite of the channel that it looks like they've got some competition coming out here, especially with Celsius. They are, are around a similar sort of market cap at the moment in that lower uh, single digit billions. And there is a big expectation of hitting double digit billions. So either or, I think has a pretty strong potential of a 10x, 20x coming in the next one to five years. We just got to see how this bull market plays out. Polkadot, gone in 60 seconds. Now this is a futures contract in Binance. Basically it had been shorted, hit 20 cents, bounced all the way back to about $30, $31. So keep that in mind if you were looking to leverage trade these markets. It looks like there, there are attacks on these all the time. Data uncovers the planned attack. And so keeping stops is very important to be safe but these markets are still immature and you can get wiped out in your stop even though you might be in a good position. So just keep that in mind. Personally, uh, I don't think there's any need to be leveraged trading on smaller cryptocurrencies because there is just so much room to grow to the upside just being long in a bull market. It's very easy at the moment. When we get into bear markets and sideways markets, that's when it gets a lot more difficult. Paid network, also exploited by $3 million in Ethereum. Maybe you've never heard of paid network, but these are the sorts of things that go on. And the, another big point I wanna bring up here is these sorts of news articles would probably dampen the market a hell of a lot if we were changing trends into a bear market. If we we're in a bear market, these sorts of headline pieces would be at the top of the news. Right now, you probably don't even see it. You just see it on this channel, maybe a couple of others. Uh, maybe you go through Cointelegraph yourself, but use this to understand the market sentiment. This is not this is not good for leverage trading. You know, they, they can fix it. Uh, Binance will probably repair this sort of thing. Great. But these sorts of things will be big in the bear market. This will be big in the in the bear market. Paid network, uh, attacker grabs 3 million. They're going to sell it onto the market, dumps the Ethereum price, even though Ethereum is in the hundreds of billions of dollars and trades 
in the tens, if not, I'm pretty sure it's in the tens of billions of dollars as well in terms of volume in the 24 hour period. I still see this as market sentiment bullish, very, very bullish. Jack Dorsey, first tweet, over two and a half million dollars so far. Bringing this up because we're gonna get into some of the NFT news. Looking at this, burnt Banksy NFT sells for $380,000 in ETH. NFT news, things are heating up. They're very hot. We saw that in the Google Trends. NFTs are high up on the list. Now for art, 67 billion. The global art market is valued around 67 billion in 2018. I'm bringing this up because the next is a project that uh, I like the look of. Terra Virtua Collect TVK. I'm not saying go out and buy this thing now. Do not do that by any means. Do your research on this. This has trading volume of 15 million, market cap well and truly down at 50 and a half million, fully diluted, 700 million. So tokenomics are very important here because this could wipe out any sort of uh, future potential gains. I bring it up because Terra Virtua is a public NFT marketplace to purchase NFTs on. So personally, I don't want to get involved in a space that I have to go and research individual NFTs. It just seems like way too much work without learning that much. I'll have to be an art collector to understand that space. However, a platform that sells the art, I would much rather get into because I can see the commissions come through in that sense. And Terra Virtua, look, it's got the marketplace here. It looks like it's up and running. We hit marketplace, we can see different artworks, different NFTs for sale. Predator, 75 bucks, 400 bucks. There's different sorts of artwork, 2D, 2DA, there's 3D in here as well. And all different pricing from tens of dollars to thousands of dollars for these pieces. The website looks pretty good. The user interface, user experience is great. A um, lot more research to be done, which is why I'm saying not to go out and buy it, but I'm giving an idea of ways to get into the NFT space without having to research individual NFT pieces. That just seems so overwhelming and complicated to me. I just could not be bothered to understand why any of these little pieces would have any sort of value. I would rather, much rather come to something like this. Just, okay, these guys are selling the NFTs. Great. TFK, TVK, let's go and do some more research into this. So it, it's already moved up a hell of a lot. We're at um, five cents currently sitting at around 56 cents. So it has moved a fair bit, but I don't see it having that really big blow off top yet. And at $50 million market cap, provided the tokenomics stack up, I'm looking at probably a 10X on this, just with how popular NFTs are. I could be completely off and it could go even to a billion market cap giving a 20X. Before we get into the charts, let's have a quick look at CoinMarketCal. Now I'm bringing this up because we see in the top, we see trending, significant, hot, is all this project here, XEM or NEM, N-E-M, but the ticker symbol is XEM and it's got a lot of votes, a lot of percentage increases, uh, lots of views and I want to check it out on the charts. And this was a very popular one in 2017, just absolutely going bonkers, spiking to uh, 15 or even more than that in the billions of dollars for the market cap. Now it's on an uh, increase again in terms of its market cap price, but in terms of its Bitcoin price, it is still relatively low. This is the US dollar price. It had a huge percentage gain. This was back in the day when market caps were very, very tiny and I don't expect to see this again, but I think it's important to bring up. Bitcoin value is well and truly down, but it could be on the verge of a breakout. That's what we like to see, a very long accumulation. I don't think this is going to get massive moves in terms of its Bitcoin valuation. It's just been a lagger ever since the 2017 bull market, but I think it could get a little bit of a move on. Looking at the price, now I've got this on a log chart. When it first came out, we were looking at returns uh, from, <laughs> from when it first came out to where we are now of 800,000%, 800,000%. These market caps back in the day were next to nothing, less than a million dollar market caps, and now currently sitting at over $7 billion market cap. So you can see the ginormous returns. I do not expect to see any of these from this 
uh, bull market, I don't expect to see this coin go 700 or 800 thousand percent. Maybe a few hundred percent, maybe a thousand percent. But in terms of that, I would I would definitely stay well well clear of those sorts of market projections. That's just one to keep in mind because it's looking pretty good on the chart in terms of a, an accumulation if we look at it on its BTC value, even though it's taken off with its US dollar value. Here's the Bitcoin value and that is a perfect pattern that we look for. A breakout, well, I want to see it consolidate above these levels. So probably looking at around that 1400 sats and get a nice constant confirming break and hold above the level rather than break above and then come back underneath because we could just sit in another accumulation zone again. So let's have a look at Uniswap before we get on to some Ethereum. Uniswap broke out of its all time highs and we were looking at this on the daily chart in the group in the investor accelerator. So if you're interested in that, there's a link to that in the description down below. The uh, the date we're looking at it was on the 4th of March. I posted this on the YouTube community post just today uh, just to show the dates that we're looking at it. We've got a nice swing out of the lows, high volume break, another accumulation, another high volume break in yesterday's action, break above the old all time high, close above the old all time high, checkbox, checkbox, checkbox. This is a great setup. Now I will mention that I don't expect it to do a similar sort of run that we saw here. This was from three bucks to $30, you know, $3.40 to $34. That's, uh, you know, uh, 10 times its number. And I can't see that happening just yet. I can't see it's going from $33 to $330. So keep that in mind, but it is a confirming breakout. The volume looks good. The swings look good. The news behind Uniswap looks good with the version three potentially coming out and reducing gas fees. So a lot of positive news, which I think is probably what this accumulation zone was. It's a small, short reaccumulation zone of only approximately, uh, let's say 14 days from that top to the day before the breakout. And then we had the breakout on the 15th day. So Uniswap against USD, USDT, any of the stable coins looking pretty good at the moment. And this is a nice uh, double confirmation after the first break here. I do like Uniswap right now. Let's finish with some Ethereum and we're hitting $1,700 highs. Like we talked about in yesterday's video, the target is around 1800 where I've got the yellow horizontal line. We want to see it at least test this area, which is the area before the crash. We had a huge bar down on high volume. There's the close and then we had the next bar down. Reason being is we want to see if the market can get close to this area before it broke broke down just to see if we have some sort of support or some buying volume around that level. Uh, we're getting very close to it now. So it's 1753. And the idea here is if we can at least get a bit of a touch and then a pullback, another great reaccumulation zone. Ideally, we don't want to see it break down past 1300 or beneath these lows of the closes, which were within this bar here. So it's around 1420 to 1470. So ideally, under 1500, not a good sign, especially with this swing low here. I don't think we'll get that far. I think we'll probably stay here and retrace to somewhere in the 15s or at least touch above and then retrace back into the 15s or 16s. So we're not far off that at all now, but just some good confirming factors, a nice strong solid low on volume, another low on volume which quickly reversed and uh, now we've got a nice first swing low out of the low. So that's all looking good, a huge bounce on 50%. This, uh, this Ethereum chart is looking very strong at the moment. Um, even if we hang under here for a few weeks, totally okay, better for the market overall. The time is on our side for Ethereum, especially with a reaccumulation zone uh, in our swing trading. So that wraps me up for another cryptocurrency news video. We looked at NFTs looking very strong, we looked at a project which could potentially be a nice uh, trade within the NFT space so that we don't have to look at NFTs individually. We got Ethereum looking strong. I suspect there may be a little bit of a pullback here, maybe a few days, maybe not. And uh, we were also looking at companies buying into Bitcoin and Ethereum this time. We know it's happening, we know it's gonna come even more, but I'm keeping an eye out just in case these happen to be 
uh, just ways for companies to be to stay relevant in their own market space. Now, just before I wrap up uh, after that little summary, let's take a quick look at Cardano. Uh, it's something that we've been following for days. So let's look at Cardano versus US dollar. Still hanging around the dollar fourteen mark hasn't been able to recover just yet and the volume is drying up drying up under these levels of our dollar 20. so i see that just maybe as a period maybe we're going to have a little bit of a drop from here just there's just no volume no one's coming into it the narrative has very much changed over to ethereum nfts anything else in that space uh, cardano ethereum also dropped uh, yesterday and it's not looking relatively strong today either cardano bitcoin Again, very similar, but holding up just slightly higher than Ethereum. Cardano on Binance. Oh, nasty, nasty little push down yesterday. And then lastly, Cardano versus DOT. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so it's reaccumulation, reaccumulating in this point, just in terms of the price ranges. So uh, Cardano, probably a little more time for it just to hang back, reaccumulate before we can take off again. Pretty much good time if uh, you've got some cash coming in, you want to do some dollar cost averaging into a project that you love. And I know many of you do love Cardano. I'll wrap that one up there. If you want to show me some love down below, like the video right here, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, bell notification icon. The investor accelerator is going up in price. We're going, the price value is going up. So if you want to get on board, hit that link in the description down below and use the discount code uh, when you sign sign up to the newsletter. So check it out on special now, price is going up. Follow me on Instagram, Q&As daily, uh, looking at the retirement fund daily as well. That's it for today's video. Catch you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done.